to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Wait on Him. Wait on Him. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we praise you now. We worship you now. We glorify you, Father God. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, that you blessed us to be on the land of the dying one more time. God, we honor you today, Father God, for you are the mighty God. You are the righteous God. You are the God who is God all by yourself. We say hallowed to your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We make you be, Father God. We press upon you, Father God, for we are you are worthy and we are unworthy. Lord, we bless your name right now. And we are willing to wait on you, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you give us a waiting spirit. Bless us, Father God, that we will wait for you and move it as you would have us to move. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins. God, we've fallen short. We've messed up. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you to forgive us for it. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we confront your word. We pray, Father God, that you lift your word from the pages into our hearts. We pray, Father God, that your word become real to us even today. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you lift us, Father God, to another level in you, Father that we will walk with you, that we will talk with you, that we won't complain about the things that we are up against, but we will glorify your name and praise you forevermore. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. 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 And thank the Lord. Amen. And thank the Lord. Thank God for this another chance, this another privilege. It's an honor to be at the house of God. It's an honor to be in the presence of God. It's an honor to be on God's side. It's an honor, Father God, to, to worship you one more again. And we say hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Praise your Lord. Praise your Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. God has given us another chance. He has given us another opportunity. He has blessed us one more time. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what God has done. I'm thankful for what God is doing. I am thankful for what God is going to do. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't mind. I don't mind. As long as it's waiting on the Lord, I want to wait on Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God has blessed us one more again uh, to come before Him in His presence, in His house. And we bless His name today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. He has blessed us again. And I'm thankful for it. Hallelujah. Let me call your attention to John chapter 12. There are three little verses that's tucked away in that chapter. Three little small verses that's tucked away. And it makes up a complete pericope. John chapter 12 in the New Testament, the book is St. John, the chapter is 12, the verses are 9, 10, and 11. John chapter 12, verses 9, 10, and 11. We thank God for this and other Lord's Day, for blessing us to, to honor him and praise him for who he is and what he's already done. John chapter 12, verses 9, 10, and 11. When you found it, you will discover these words. Now, a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came, not for, the, for Jesus' sake only, 
but they, that they might also see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. I want to talk about a plot to kill my testimony. A plot to kill my testimony. A plot to kill my testimony. The world in which we live, plots are real. We even see on the latest headlines that the governors of Mississippi and the governors of Texas are plotting to kill off a whole population. There's no doubt, there's no, no qualms about it, there is no reason for what they have done other than the fact that they are plotting to take out a particular group of people. There's no reason in the middle of a pandemic that they will reject all of the principles that are needed to make mankind safe in the states of Mississippi and the states of Texas. I want to say from one leader to those leaders that you are just in the midst of a plot to kill my testimony. They're, they're in the midst, they, they have come to the point in their lives where, where they have been emboldened and, and they are looking for reason to, to do what they want to do and, and because they consider themselves the leaders who are in charge, they think that they can do whatever they want to do. But I want to say to you today, God is not sleep. God is still watching. God knows. God knows what your motives are. God knows what you're doing. God knows how you're doing it. God knows what you're going through. And God knows that you're seeking to kill the steal and destroy. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Jesus says in John 10 and 10 that the devil comes. The Satan comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. Yeah, they, they've come to, to kill off your young people. They've come to steal your joy. And they come to rob you of all your words of encouragement. Amen. But I stopped by today as the leader of this congregation and a community leader to let you know, don't let your, your God down. Whatever you do, don't, don't get focused on the confusing situation so much so that you let your God down. I want to say to you today, many, over a half a million people in these great United States of America have lost their lives because of confused messages. They've lost their lives. They, they have lost their lives because men have been confused because they have been getting messages for the last year from a White House that did not support the mandates of science and medicine. Men are confused because those who are, are re retropicans have come to the point in their lives where their, their little personal agendas are more important than human life. And it's because they have the safeguards around them. They have those things around them that will benefit them, but I'm not fooled, and many of us who are watching are not fooled. We know that you are in a plot to kill off my testimony. You know, you're in a plot. You're in a plot to take away the testimony that God has given me, how God has blessed me, how God has kept me, how God has led me through danger seen and unseen. And now you come to a point in your life where you are bold enough to stand and try to kill our testimony. 
Well, this killing of the testimony is not new. This killing of, of the people are not new. This taking the lives of innocent people is not new. This, this plotting is not new. When we look at John chapter 11, we find Jesus there, and he is a very close friend of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. I said Jesus is there, and Jesus is a very close friend of Mary and Martha. Whenever Jesus went to, to Bethany, he hung out with Mary and Martha. He hung out with them, and in the midst of his hanging out, sometime he would have to settle a bitter dispute between Mary and Martha. You see, Mary, Mary was one that would sit quietly and listen to Jesus. Mary was one that would participate in the presence of Jesus. And Martha was one that would work for Jesus. I want to say to you today, my dear, we need some Marys and we need some Martha. And yeah, we need some Marys that will sit at the foot of Jesus. We need somebody that will stand with Jesus. We need somebody who will listen to the voice of Jesus. We need some Marys. We need somebody who can calm down in the midst of all this turmoil that's going on. And we need some marriage that will listen to Jesus and enjoy Jesus' presence. The problem is for the last year, we, many of us have gotten, have gotten comfortable. We've gotten comfortable in our sealed houses. We've gotten comfortable doing our own thing. We've gotten comfortable getting up when we want to. We've gotten comfortable not even listening to the word of God. We've gotten so comfortable until Jesus is no longer our main agenda. But we need Mary. We need a, a Mary spirit where, where we will sit at the feet of Jesus. We, we will listen to the word of God. We will study the word of God. We will listen to the word of God on our audio cassette player. We will get along with Jesus, spend time with Jesus, and let Jesus bless our inner man. Oh yeah, not only do we need Mary, we need Martha also. <laughs> We need somebody that will stand and, and, and work for the Lord. We need somebody that will sacrifice for the Lord. We need somebody that will go to work and go to bat for the Lord. We need some Marys and we need some Marthas. And then we need Lazarus. In John chapter 11, we find Lazarus that was a friend of Jesus. These three welcomed Jesus to the house when he came to Bethany. They made it comfortable for Jesus. I want to say to you, not only do we need Mary who will sit at the foot of Jesus, not only do we need Martha who will work to benefit Jesus, we also need Lazarus that will have hospitality for Jesus. Who will, who will be a friend of Jesus? Are you a friend of Jesus? Are you somebody that Jesus can depend on? Does Jesus have your back and you have Jesus back? So it was. Mary and Martha sent to Jesus because Lazarus was, was sick. The Bible says in John chapter 11 that, that he stayed two more days. He tarried. Thank you, Sister Davis. And, and they wanted to wait on Jesus. And, and we ought to wait on him. But Jesus could have been there, but he tarried two more days. By the time Jesus got there, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Not only had he been dead for four days, he was not only just dead, he was stinking dead. He was all the way dead. Rhythm officers had eaten up his body dead. He was no breath dead. He was no heartbeat dead. He was all the way dead. And his sister said, if you had been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. First, Martha runs to him and tells him, Jesus, you should have been here. This is your friend. If you had have been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. Yes. Then when he came to Mary and Mary ran to him, Mary had the same consensus. If you had have been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus says, it's all right. He's just sleeping. He, he's going to rise again. Martha said, I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection. Jesus responds by saying, I am the resurrection. Jesus says, you are standing in the presence of the resurrection now. If he's going to rise again, the resurrection is here. 
He says, I'm standing here and I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the one who, who will be here for you. I am the resurrection. Then Jesus began to talk to them about his, his death and how he's going to put death, his last enemy, he's going to put death to shame. Jesus says that, that death will, will be the last enemy that he kills off. In the midst of that, they plotted. After he rose from the dead, after Lazarus came forth, after Jesus called Lazarus forth, they plotted to kill Jesus. In chapter 11, in chapter 11, they plotted to kill Jesus. Chapter 11, verses 45 through 54, they plotted to kill Jesus. I want to tell you today that you don't have to do anything wrong. Matter of fact, you can be all the way right, and they will plot to kill you. You don't, you, they'll plot to kill you because they don't like what you look like. They'll plot to kill you because of color of your skin. They will plot to kill you just because you are who you say you are. So they plotted to kill Jesus. Let me just serve you notice today, if they are plot to kill Jesus, you know they are plot to kill you. <laughs> they plotted to kill Jesus because Jesus was saving souls. Jesus was doing good to mankind. And they plotted to kill Jesus even though Jesus was saving mankind. So they began, Jesus no longer walked in the crowd anymore. But he walked in the wilderness on the side roads and and they couldn't kill him. Then John chapter 12 opens up. Six days later, Jesus came to Bethany. The same Bethany where he raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was present there. There they made him supper. Mary, Mary was present, Martha was present, Lazarus was present. The dead man was sitting there at the table. <laughs> Can't you see it now? Can't you see it now? The man that was once dead, Lazarus, that was once dead, that Jesus raised from the dead, is sitting at the table. Let me just tell you today, if you were once dead in your sin, once you meet Jesus, you can rise up and sit at the table with him. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus was there. Martha was serving them. Lazarus was present. The one that Jesus raised from the dead. Uh, Martha was serving them. Then Mary took out a, a spotlit oil and, and began to, to wash his feet with the oil and, and dry it with her hair. And you know Judas had something to say. Judas had something to say. Judas had something to say. This woman is humbling herself. This woman is down on the ground. This woman is down on her knees watching Jesus feet with her hair. Judas, Judas Iscariot, Judas Simon's son, Judas, the one who later betrayed Jesus, Judas had something to say. I want to tell you today, my dears, the man with the money sometimes have to be watched. Judas, the one with the money, the text declares that Judas carried the money box. Judas carried the money bag. Judas was the one that was always concerned about money. Let me just say to you, you be to watch sometimes. You be to be careful sometimes of the one that's always concerned about money. Let me just tell you that the spirit of the Lord is more important than money. Let me just tell you that walking with the Lord is more important than money. Let me tell you that serving the Lord is more important than money. We need to be careful how we're more concerned about money than we are about souls. I've seen churches, I've, I've been to churches, I've, I've attended church services there where, where when, when they raise a lot of money, the folk get up and shout. The folks celebrate the Lord and they ought to celebrate the Lord because God is the one who did it. I celebrate with them. They ought to celebrate the Lord. When we raise money unto the Lord, we ought to celebrate the Lord. When we have a gift that's an unusual gift, we ought to celebrate the Lord. When God gives us money, we ought to celebrate him. But the problem to those churches, not this church, but other churches, the problem in many other churches is the fact they celebrate the Lord over money, but they don't celebrate the Lord over souls. 
When a soul comes down the aisle, they look at that person funny. They look at him head to toe. They look at him like he didn't have a shower, didn't have a bath, like he didn't have money. The fact of the matter is the soul ought to be rejoiced over. The Bible declares that when one soul comes to the Lord, the angels in heaven throw a block party. They begin to celebrate because one soul has come to the Lord. We ought to celebrate when another soul has come to the Lord. We ought to rejoice when a soul comes to him. We ought not be like those churches that rejoice only when they get money. We ought to rejoice if there's no money in the cupboard. We ought to rejoice if there's no money in the bank. We ought to celebrate Jesus because he's not a banker, even though he can make things happen at the bank. He is the Lord Jesus himself. He makes things happen without money. That's why I oftentimes tell you, if I have favor, I can get money. I'd rather have favor than to have money because if I have favor from the Lord, the Lord can make money come to me and I don't even have to go to money. You need to be more concerned about favor than you are about money. So Judas speaks up. Judas says this, this oil that this woman spent, this oil that this woman poured on Jesus' feet could have been used in the treasury for something else. Well, first of all, the text declares that Judas wasn't concerned about the money being used in ministry. Because the text declares that every now and then, Judas would take some of the money out of the money box and put it in his pocket. It's right there in the text. He, he was more concerned about filling his own pocket. God delivered me from leaders who are more concerned about money than they are about winning souls for Christ. God delivered me from leaders who are more concerned about filling their pockets than they are about reaching souls for Jesus because we are here, we are called to reach souls for Jesus. New beginning, we are called to reach souls. We are called to, to put out the fire that's going on in this world. We are called to speak truth to, to power. We are called to tell every woman, boy, and girl that Jesus lives and he's our hope and glory. And he's here with us today. Jesus closes that particular pericope out in John chapter 12. He closes it out in verse number 8 that says, leave her alone. Leave this woman alone because this has been given as a burial to my body. Let me tell you, it may not look like much to other folk, but when we commit totally to Jesus, Jesus is able to make things all right. <laughs> when we totally commit to Jesus, the problem is people are not committed to him. The problem is people are doing everything than committing to Jesus. You know who you are, you know what you do, you know what you don't do. We ought to be committed to Jesus Christ. It moves to verse number nine. It says, now there was a great number of Jews who knew he was there, who knew Jesus was there. They knew Jesus was there and they, they, they came, not for Jesus' sake, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. Look at these people. These people, I want to tell you, sometimes people come to church for the wrong reason. You ought to keep coming to church. You ought to keep listening to church. You ought to keep being a part of church. But you ought not have church for the wrong reason. We ought to come to church to hear from the Lord. We ought not come to church to see who's with who. We ought not come to church to see who has what on. We ought not come to church to, to fellowship and hang out. We ought to come to church as Mary did to meet Jesus at the church. We ought, we ought to come to meet Jesus. We ought to come to meet Jesus. These people came because Jesus was at church. These people came because they heard that Jesus was in the land. Now they did one thing right. They did one thing right. They heard that Jesus was there. And because they heard that Jesus was there, they showed up. Right. Did you show up this morning because Jesus is here? Did you come by because you knew that Jesus would arrive? Did you come by? Did you tune in because you wanted to hear from Jesus? Let me just say to you today, we need to hear from Jesus. 
We need to come because Jesus is here. We need to come because the world is trying to steal our testimony. They are plotting to kill our testimony. We need Jesus every year. We need Jesus every month. We need Jesus every week. We need Jesus every hour. We need Jesus every minute. We need Jesus every second of the day. These Jews, and it wasn't just one Jew. The text declares that many Jews, these religious folk, these folk that know the Torah, these people that know the word, let me just park right here and let you know, just because you know the word, it's not enough to know it, you got to live the word. They knew the word, they, they exercised the word in their own way, let me just let you know, you can't just pick and choose from the word, you got to exercise the word even when it hits you. Even when it's against you, even when it doesn't support your program, you need to hear the word and exercise the word. Yes. The text says that they came. The Jews, many Jews knew that he was there, and they came. My next point is you ought to come. <laughs> you, you, ought to, you ought to come. You ought to show up. You ought to, you ought to make sure that your name is... It's counted for. You ought to make sure if you're in your home, if you're in the church, you ought to make sure that you are counted for. You ought not be washing dishes when the word is going for. You ought not be mopping the floor when the word is going for. You ought not be playing with games when the word is going forward. You ought to be attentive to the word of God. They came. And they came not for Jesus' sake only. I told you they came for Jesus, but the, the text of class they didn't come for Jesus only. That means they came for some other reason. I want to say to you today that when you come to church, when you tune in to church, when you listen to church, when you listen to the word, when you, you study the word, you ought not have a whole lot of other confusion going on. You ought to make sure you dedicate yourself to Jesus, to the word of God only. It says, it says in verse number 10, but the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. When we look at chapter 11 of John, we see that the, the Jews, the, the chief priests, those in charge, the Pharisees, they plotted to put Jesus to death. They could not get Jesus, so they plotted to take on Jesus' testimony. Yeah, Lazarus, Lazarus represent the testimony of Jesus Christ. Lazarus represent his own testimony. Let me tell you, many times, if they can't get you, they'll get somebody close to you. I want to say to parents all over the world, grandparents, great-grandparents, if, if the devil can't get to you, he want to get your children, he want to get your grandchildren, he wants to get your great-grandchildren. If he can't get to you, he wants to get your husband. If he can't get to you, he wants to get your wife. If he can't get to you, he wants to get your boo. Let me just share with you, the devil has come to strip us. He has come to steal our joy. He has come to kill our spirit. He has come to destroy our very soul if we are not. And then I, I noticed something here. The devil didn't come in a pitchfork, red neotards. He didn't come posing as a devil. That's how the devil does it. He doesn't come posing as a bad person. He shows up, and look how he shows up. He shows up as a chief priest. He shows up as many chief priests. And these chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Uh, Brother Miles did a good job in Sunday school this morning and, and letting us know, he, he let us know this morning that you have to be careful how you follow false prophets. We have to be careful how we listen to those who say they are righteous. We have to listen and we have to make sure that we are careful how we handle things around people who say they have a word from the Lord. Let me tell you, everybody who calls themselves apostle is not an apostle. 
Matter of fact, there are not one anyway. All those who say they have a word from the Lord, they don't have a word from the Lord. All those who say that they are called by God, they're not called by God. Brother Miles said today, and I say again today, uh, you can know that a man is a prophet, a woman is a prophetess, based on if they prophesy that is true. And that doesn't mean all time that they are prophets. It says... But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also. He plotted to kill Jesus. <laughs> now he's plotting to kill Lazarus. You see, Lazarus had the testimony. Lazarus had the testimony that the devil is after. I want to say to you today, my dears, you have a testimony. You got a testimony, and the devil is after your testimony. You got a testimony. You have a testimony that God has blessed you. And you know we are we are saved, we, we are delivered, and you ought to run and tell somebody your testimony means much to what God has done. It means much to other people. We gotta go ahead and testify of God's goodness. We can't take the credit. We got to testify of how good God has been. And if God has been good to you, they don't know your story. They don't know what you've been through. So you don't worry about what they know or what they don't know. You just testify of God's goodness. I want to say to you today, you can't have a testimony without going through a test. And if you're going through something right now, just wait a while, wait a minute, wait on God. Don't give up, don't give out, don't give in. Stay in there, hang in there. God is going to give you a testimony after you come through this test. Testimony. The devil has plotted to kill your testimony. He's plotted to take away your testimony. The chief priest, those in charge, are not here for, for glory to the Lord. Those in charge are not always here to make sure men and women live. We know about these governors that we have in the 21st century. They are here to kill, steal, and destroy. Confusion. Relieving the mandates. Of wearing masks and keeping socially distancing. And they are relieving the mandates of, of, of getting in small crowds and rather than hanging out in big crowds. They are relieving the mandate of staying at home and, and not doing the things that will cause you to contract the virus or spread the virus. They know what they're doing. They are only concerned about the Republican Party and if they're going to make it to make it to the election. I want to serve notice on Mr. Greg Abbott that 2022 is coming. 2022 is coming, and if we, if we go out the boat like we went out the boat, that seat will not have him in it ever again. We have to come to a point in our lives where we're willing to stand for the Lord, stand for righteousness, and stand for the lives of others. Our children will ask us later on, where did you stand, mama? Where did you stand, daddy? What position did you take, grandpa? What position did you take, big mama, when they were doing all this? What was your take on it? I want my children, grandchildren, great grands to say my daddy st stood flat-footed and he told the solid truth that God is able to keep us even in the midst of this mess. Amen. It's a master day. It's a master cause. Now we got a, a golden, a golden statue, a life-size statue of the worst president has, that has ever existed in history. And we are seeing men, grown men, bowing down to a golden statue. It reminds us of our daily listening, doesn't it? How Aaron built the calf and, and when Moses came down off the hill, they had bowed down to a golden calf. I want to say to you young people, this is not God. And don't bow down. Don't bow down to any man. Only bow down to God in heaven. It's an ugly statue. With an ugly man. And they bowing down. It's not even an attractive statue. It doesn't even have, have good workmanship. It's a messed up statue. And they are bowing down to it. I want to tell you, Jesus is coming back. And he's coming soon and very soon. They're bowing down 
to golden statues in the United States of America of a man that mean none of them any good because had he meant them good, he would not have had them packed in and dying off because of the coronavirus. The Bible says that these chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. And this is why they wanted to put him to death. Because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Let me tell you, people are so concerned about their personal agendas until if you follow Jesus, they want to kill the testimony. They want Lazarus dead because if they kill off Lazarus, they can stand and say there is no more testimony. But I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that God is able to keep you in the midst of what goes on around you. I want to tell you today that the devil desires to sift you like sifting wheat. I want to tell you today the devil wants to kill your blessing. The devil wants to destroy your hope. The devil wants to take your strength. The devil wants to steal your joy. The devil doesn't want you to get a good education. The devil wants to destroy your love. The devil wants to take away your message. The devil wants to take structure out of your household and out of the school system. I want to tell you today, God has a better plan. The, God has a better plan. The devil wants you to have a bad attitude. The devil wants to kill your dreams, kill your goal, kill your vision. The devil wants to kill your relationship. The devil wants to destroy your spirit. And most of all, the devil wants you to stop trusting in Jesus. I tell you today, my dears, keep trusting in him. Keep sticking with him. He is our only hope. He's been our hope in ages past. And he will be our hope in ages to come. If Big Mama was here, she'll tell you that the same bridge that brought me over is the same bridge I'm going to stay on. In the text, the Bible declares that the devil has come to kill the steel and destroy. He's come to kill your testimony. Keep telling your testimony. Keep glorifying Jesus Christ. Keep telling good men and bad men about how God has blessed you. Because it was mean men over 2,000 years ago that took my Lord and your God. Mean men, I tell you, over 2,000 years ago killed Jesus on a skull hill called Calvary. They killed him. They nailed him tight. They locked him in tight. They raised him up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. They lifted him up. They, he died on Calvary. They pierced him in his side. They took him off the cross. And when they took him off the cross, they laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. But the good news is, early that third day morning, early before the rooster could crow, early that third day morning, before the before they could chase the God early of that third day morning before they could anoint his body he got up with all power all power in heaven and earth in his hand he rose I tell you he rose, he rose for you and he rose for me if you can believe the story today you can be saved right here you can be saved right now you can have a new determination today and not only can you be saved you can have joy while you're here you can have joy in your spirit Enjoy in your home. Jesus paid it all on Calvary and all to him we owe. Our sins are as starting, but he has washed us whiter than snow. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What can take away all of our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. The blood came streaming down. The blood has blessed us. Now we have a testimony. I was on my way to hell, but Jesus saved me. He rescued me. He turned me around. He blessed me, and he's blessing me every day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's blessed me again. He's enabled me to come again and acknowledge him. And there may be somebody listening today. 
There may be somebody present today who's never confessed Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. This is your chance to get to know Jesus. They are plotting that you don't have a testimony. You can't have a testimony without trusting Jesus as your personal Savior. You need the testimony that that day I heard the preacher preach. He talked about plots to take away, plot to kill my testimony. I heard him that day. And it was that day I gave my life to Christ. You can be saved right here, right now. You can get a testimony. You can have a testimony today. But you must trust Jesus as your personal Savior. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you trust him? The door is open. All you have to do is believe the story. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost. He died, I tell you. And they took him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can just believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus. You can qualify for heaven. If you just trust him. Will you bow your head with me and invite him into your life? Believing that he's the son of God. The son who died for your sins. The son who rose from the dead. The son who saves. And it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can trust Jesus and he can give you new life. Just repeat after me in this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe as you pray this prayer, you're not born again. You need to make sure that you join a good Bible teaching church. And I believe that the New Beginning Church is a good Bible teaching church where the word of God is taught uncompromisingly. If you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know. And we will welcome you to the New Beginning Church. If you've received Christ during this broadcast, I want to say to you, inbox me. Let me know so we can rejoice with you. And you can be a member also. If you're distant or you're near, you can join the New Beginning Church. You can be a member, a full-fledged member. Just inbox me. Let me know. I've seen you all the documentation. And you can brag about me and being a member of the New Beginning Church in Southeast Houston. If you're here today and you have messed up and you're, you are a sinner that has turned away from God, you're saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you've fallen away. I want to pray with you today. Ask God to allow you to recommit and he will do it. Will you pray with me? Lord, we pray for this person, these persons. We pray that you touch them, heal them, bless them. We pray that you bless them in a way, Father God, that, that only you can. 
Lord, we ask you to turn them around and bless them to repent of their sins and bless them to be about your business. We thank you now and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on to Christ. Well, this is first Sunday, so we have communion. If you would get together your communion and after communion, we will take up the offering. We ask those of you who are here, come up and get your communion, unwrap it, and we will eat together. You can take it back to your seat and we will eat together. Those of you who are at home, uh, go ahead and get your crackers and your drink out and, and we will break bread together in communion. We will break bread together and have communion together. We will have communion together. We will break bread together and we will have communion, communion together. We will have communion. So you can take it back to your seat, open it up, unwrap it, and then we will have communion together. If you, if you have aught against any brother, let it go. Forgive them. You don't want to uh, drink or eat damnation to your soul. It's not worth going forward in. You have all to forgive. But those of you at home, uh, go ahead and, and join us as we come to the Lord in prayer and go before the Lord and thank him for this privilege of communion. Thank God for this privilege of having, having communion together having communion together. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus in Christ we come. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you for your holy name. We thank you for another chance, another privilege to be about your business, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless us. We ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for messing up, Forgive us for unforgiveness. We pray, Father God, that as we come to partake in communion, that you bless us. Jesus says, as often as we do it, we show forth his death and suffering until he come again. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the bread. We pray that you bless the drink. We pray, Father God, that we commit to you in such a way that you will be pleased with us. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. You can go ahead and unwrap your communion. When Jesus met with his disciples, he broke the bread, he blessed it, he said, this is my body. As often as you eat this, you show forth my death and suffering until I come again. Eat ye all of it. And he held up a cup, he said, this is the cup, my blood. For the remission of your sins, drink ye all of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has, has blessed us again to commune with him by way of the communion. And we thank him for it. And now we want to commune with him by way of tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Why don't we thank the Lord for the privilege of giving unto him through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. You can give by four ways on today. Those who are present will give by uh, dropping their money in the basket in the envelope. And they have done that. Those of you who are not present, you can who are, who are present but you're not in the room, 
you can give uh, give your tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift one of three ways. Of course, we're pushing everybody to either mail in their offering, their tithes, or use sale for their tithes and offering. We are asking you to uh, to give to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's our Zelle account. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. The P.O. Box where you can mail a check to is P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. You can still give by way of Cash App, although we are slowly moving away from Cash App. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC S O U L S. Dollar sign or cash tag NBC Souls. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to give tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts as your church. Uh, is in need and your, your God is holding you responsible. So thank you so much for giving. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for every giver. We ask you to bless this offering. Bless it to be what you would have it to be, that it will glorify your kingdom, glorify your ministry in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. And we ask it all. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're located at 4251 Shearmire Road. Our service time in the building is 10.30 a.m. Our broadcast begins at 10.45. So those who are worshiping with us in person, uh, please feel free to come. We are, we are masking up. Everybody in the room are wearing masks. Your temperature will be checked. Your phone number will be taken for tracking pers person tra tracing purposes. So please, ma'am, please, sir, we have plenty of room. If you choose to join us, we'll be glad to have you. If you ever in the Houston area, please come by our worship service at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. We haven't missed a Sunday yet, so come on by and worship. Worship with us. Thank you again for joining us. Please come back and be a part of our service. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. At the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. Again, God bless you, and God keep you, is our prayer.